Welcome to our lesson about the transport panel. The transport panel is a very convenient multitask floating panel that gives you access to a number of important tools that you'll be using all the time. When you're working with a digital audio workstation, there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to at the same time. Are your inputs working? What are your output levels like? Do you have MIDI in, MIDI out? Is there overload on your CPU? Plus, you want to be able to get around your project really quickly and have quick access to commands like the pre-click counts, the click track, punching in and out, the record modes, etc. Well, all of this and more can be done quickly and accessed in an at-a-glance way from the transport panel. It's also a real space saver even if you're working with more than one monitor. It cuts down on the time you spend moving your mouse from command to command, from window to window. In this lesson, we'll be learning about the available tools on the transport panel and how to customize its display. You open the transport panel by selecting Transport, Transport Panel, just make sure it's checked, or you can use the shortcut key F2. The transport panel's pretty wide with all the tools on it. It's wider than my video screen here. Now, normally, you don't need all the tools to display at one time. Sometimes you just need to use tools for recording. Sometimes you just want to see the tools for editing or arranging, etc. Well, Cubase gives you an easy way to hide and show the tools. You just right click, that's a control click on your Mac, anywhere on the transport panel and ensure that the tools you want visible are checked. Just scroll down and select them if they're not checked. If you select Setup, and that command appears outside of my recording area, so let me just drag up the panel so you can see that. As you can see, you're able to reposition the transport panel by hovering your cursor over the left and right edges. The cursor's icon will change to a hand, and that lets you know that you're able to move it. Let go of your mouse to drop it in place. Let's right-click or command-click on the transport panel. Everything marked with a check mark is currently visible from left to right on the transport panel. If you want to hide a tool, just unselect it from this list. Let's right click again to pull up the tool menu, and now let's scroll down to Setup. This launches the Transport Panel Setup dialog window, and it looks just like the dialog window for setting up the toolbar. We learned about that in our lesson on the project window. You use the arrow buttons in the middle to move items from the visible to invisible column and vice versa. You can also reposition the tools on the transport panel from left to right using the move up and move down buttons. Click move up to move a tool to the left on the transport panel and clicking move down will of course move it over to the right. And we can see our display update in real time. Let's close the setup window. Right-click again on the transport panel and let's take a look at some of Cubase's preset transport panel displays. We've got Show All and Default here. Show All shows all of the tools and that is too wide for my display resolution currently and of course I wouldn't need all of those tools at once anyway. The Cubase's default displays basically the recording tools. And then we have some other preset displays as well. Transport buttons. This displays the recording controls for starting and stopping, etc. Buttons and time display next. Now dual time display. We see the primary and secondary time displays here. A mini time display to save even more space. Status fields only. This gives us the recording modes, the locators, the time display, and the master and sync section where we can turn on and off the click track. Virtual keyboard. This is a one octave keyboard and it lets us input MIDI data without an external controller. The black keys are the numbers up top and the white keys are the letters below. Next are the jog and scrub controls with the markers. You can quickly close a panel by clicking in the top left or right corner and then just press F2 on your keyboard to bring it back. Okay, let's take a few minutes to go through these various tools so that you know what they mean. Some of these tools we've looked at or used already, so you might know how they work, and some of them we cover in greater detail later in this course. 
If I don't say much about it here, it means that I do cover it later on. Let's right-click again on the Transport panel to pull up the list of available tools. Let's right-click on the Transport panel. Virtual Keyboard we already looked at. Performance. Here we've got two meters at the far left of the Transport panel. The first meter is the ASO Time Usage Meter. The second stripe is a Disk Cache Usage Meter. What you need to remember here is if one of these bars reaches the top and stays there and turns red, causing a red light to appear up in this area, you should probably reduce some of your system load. Next, here are recording modes. The top drop-down menu selects a linear recording mode, and underneath you select a recording mode for when you're recording in a loop or cycle recording. Here's a button to activate auto-quantize. Toggle this on if you want any MIDI recording to be automatically quantized according to a grid that you've set up. And you set up quantizing in the Quantize Setup dialog window. Just go to MIDI in the main menu strip and select Quantize Setup. We're going to be talking more about this in a little bit. And let's go back to the Transport panel. Generally, buttons on this panel turn white or are lit up when they're active. Currently, Auto Quantize is off, and it states off next to it. Next, let's take a look at the Locators section. Locators. We click here to move to the position of the left locator. Click here to go to the right locator. Click here to activate Punch In, and here to activate Punch Out. Again, the buttons appear white or lit up when they're toggled on. Punching in and out is when you're replacing a section of a take. These numbers indicate the positions of the left and right locators. Here are two buttons to toggle on and off pre and post roll, and that's a feature we use when punching in and out. The pre and post roll can start and finish your playback before and after your punch in and out points. By the way, in case you don't remember this, we can adjust the position of the left and right locators by dragging these triangles on the ruler. Currently, the area within the locators displays in blue, and that means your locators are positioned correctly. If the stripe between the locators displays in red, it means your left locator is positioned to the right of the right locator. Your punching in and out and other locator functions won't work properly when your locators are in the wrong places. Here we can change the position of the locators using the scroll wheel or by inputting the values directly. And below are the value fields where you can input the amount of pre-roll and post-roll. You input in the primary time display, and these fields are only active for editing when pre-roll and post-roll are toggled on. Let's disable the pre- and post-roll. And now let's right-click on the locator again and bring in the jog and scrub tools. These concentric rings here are actually three different navigational tools. These tools are useful for moving the cursor within a project while you're listening to it. On the outside, we've got the shuttle wheel. Moving it to the right or left makes the cursor move forward or backward in time. The farther from the center the little dot is, the faster the playback will be. And the maximum speeds are shown by these lines on the right and left of the shuttle wheel. To shuttle through your song, click on the circle and just drag it to the left or right. The middle ring is called the jog wheel. You can turn this one as much as you want, unlike with the shuttle wheel. Just drag it left and right. And this moves the project cursor forward or backward in time. This moves the project cursor forward or backward in time. When you stop moving your mouse, the playback will stop. And this is a good tool for finding specific cues in your song. Inside the jog wheel are the nudge frame buttons. These move the cursor forward or backward one frame at a time. The nudge tool can be pretty useful when you're working with a video file. Next, we've got the transport control, and you'll recognize most of these. Left to right, they are go to previous marker or zero, rewind, fast forward, go to next marker or project end if you don't have any markers set up, cycle mode or loop mode, then stop, play, and record. This section here is called the main transport. 
On the top are the primary and secondary time display. Currently, my primary time display is in bars and beats. My project ruler also displays my values in bars and beats. My secondary time display appears in standard time format, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. I can click here to select a different primary time display. We've got a few different options to choose them with bars and beats and seconds being most popular. And I click here to select a different secondary time format. Again, the same choices. I can exchange the time formats of the primary and secondary time displays by clicking this button here. The main transport has some navigation tools too. I can nudge the cursor right and left using the plus and minus buttons respectively. This project time position slider lets me click anywhere on it and this repositions my cursor at that point in time on the song. Let's right click on the transport panel and bring up the arranger. Let me actually hide some of the tools that we've already talked about so that I can free up some space here. Locators as well, jog and scrub. Okay. The arranger controls. These provide special playback modes for your play order tracks, which are named arranger in Cubase 5. Basically this control area gives us some tools for sequencing your audio events without having to rearrange the audio clips themselves. Here's the master and sync control area. This is an area that we use primarily during recording. Here we can activate the click track, toggling it on and off, toggling on the pre-clicks, set the tempo as well, changing both time signature and the tempo, beats per minute. Click here to toggle on external project synchronization. This is something that you would do if you were working, for example, with a video. Next is the marker display and control area. Just click on the Show button to display your current list of markers. I haven't set any up yet, but we'll be looking at this later on. And then just click on a marker number to navigate instantly to that position on the timeline. We're going to be learning how to create markers later in this section of the course. Over here we've got the MIDI Activity Meter, and this displays MIDI In activity on the left and MIDI Out activity on the right. It gives you an at-a-glance view of your connectivity, letting you know if your connections are actually working. To the right of the MIDI activity meter is the audio activity meter, showing audio in on the left from the default input and audio out on the right from the main mix output channel. Next, we've got a slider that lets us adjust the gain on the output channel. We just left click on the slider and then drag it up or down. Then you don't have to open the mixer window if you want to quickly increase or decrease your main output. Well, as you can see, the transport panel offers many shortcuts for getting around your project. And this concludes our overview of the transport panel. Next, we're going to take a look at the mixer window.